Alright guys, I'm um, just going to do a quick video on ankle range of motion. We're going to do ankle plantar flexion and ankle dorsiflexion here with Jack today. These are Jack's feet in case you don't know. Um, so, uh, first of all the three landmarks that we're going to use are going to be the same for both plantar flexion and dorsiflexion. So the uh, fixed arm is basically going to be along the axis of his lower leg. Okay, so basically running alongside the fibula. The axis of rotation is going to be this part here. This is called the lateral malleolus. And now the movable arm is actually going to be parallel with this fifth metatarsal. Okay, so the fifth metatarsal is this part here. And the reason it has to be parallel is if I put those landmarks on, so what I'll do first, I'll just get Jack to slide his feet down. Okay. That just helps get that axis of rotation off the bed, otherwise it's kind of hard to line it up so I kind of have to push down there. Okay, so I've got his ankles lined off the bed and obviously he's lying face up. If I line up my landmarks here, if I put this uh, movable arm on his foot, okay, so what we normally do, we usually put the movable arm on a segment. If I actually put it on the segment, you can see how the goniometer is not really telling me what his ankle is actually doing. If you look at his ankle, it looks like it should be in roughly this position, okay? But if I actually put that movable arm on his foot, you can see that my goniometer isn't actually telling me what his ankle's doing, okay? And that's because the axis of rotation is more proximal than usual, okay? So what I actually need to do is I need to try and make sure that my movable arm is parallel, okay? So running in the same direction as this part of his foot, the fifth metatarsal. Okay, so what I'll do first is I'll just get some dorsiflexion going. So I'll ask Jack to dorsiflex his ankle as much as he can. I'm going to take my three landmarks and note that my movable arm is parallel with this fifth metatarsal. Okay, and I'm going to pull that off and you can relax here. Now, the key thing to remember here with the ankle stuff is that a neutral ankle position, so just go roughly in neutral for me, Jack, that looks like 90 degrees. But remember, that's anatomical position, and anatomical position is defined as zero degrees, okay? So if I take this value here, which I just measured, and I read the black numbers, it says 80 degrees, but I know that 90 degrees is actually defined as zero, okay? So I can either take the difference between those two values, so the difference between 90 and 80 is obviously 10 degrees, or instead of looking at the black values on the going on, which is what I normally look at, I can actually look at the red values on the outside, and if I look at the red values here, I can see that that value actually lines up with 10 degrees. Okay? So my actual answer there for dorsiflexion range of motion is 10. And you can expect pretty small values for dorsiflexion. In fact, it's actually quite normal for some people to be unable to even reach a neutral ankle position. Okay? So for ankle plantar flexions, exact same landmarks, this time I'm just going to ask Jack to plantar flex his ankle as much as he can. Now using those same landmarks, I've gone along the axis of the lower leg, I'm on the lateral malleolus here, and then I'm just getting this parallel to its fifth metatarsal, and then I pull that away. Okay. Again, if I look at the black values here, it says 145, okay. but if I look at the red values here, I know the actual answer is 55 degrees, because remember, that 90 degree looking position, that's actually zero degrees, because that's not Okay, that's how you do ankle range motion.